always ask me how I met Andy Warhol, and I think they assume it was in, you know, Max's Kansas City or someplace, or on the street. But uh, actually, I was studying film criticism up at Columbia University uh, in a graduate program under Andrew Saris, who was the lead critic of The Village Voice, which was the hot paper in New York in the late 60s. This was 1969. And for Saris's class, we had to review a film a week. And one week I reviewed Andy Wall's Trash very favorably. And Saris published it in The Village Voice, and Andy read it, and had Paul Morrissey, who directed the film, call me up and offer me a job at this magazine they just started called Interview. A hundred to one fifty. The athletes are, hard, for some reason, are harder to sell. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sotheby's. I'm at Mount Bitter and selling for nineteen thousand dollars. Thank you, Alan. Look at this baby Warhol. Forty to sixty thousand. Andy was relentless in pushing all of us to sell the commission portraits. You know, so we'd get our 20% commission since we're all on very low salaries. And I mean, he'd call and sell ads for interview. I mean, he'd call me 9 o'clock every morning and say, you know, oh, I saw you at Calvin Klein at Studio 54 last night. Did you sell any ads? Andy decided to do my portrait in 1980. It really was sort of a payoff for a, a portrait sale I had made for him. Uh, to uh, Italian jewelers who paid him in uh, with an emerald. Which leads us to Andy Warhol's Coca-Cola number four, the cover lot of tonight's sale. And uh, let's not really get $15 million. If $16 million is bid at $16 million, or is $17 million. It's a gentleman's bid at $23 million. Are we done? Last chance. Selling now for $31 million. $500,000. It's like a really good time to cash in, quite frankly. Warhol prices have keep hitting peaks. Um, the art market is doing really well. And they go for Warhol because it's a brand name. You know, it's, it's like that's the status symbol. That's the Mercedes-Benz or the Rolex watch. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, I had it in storage um, for a long time. I mean, to have a 40 by 40 picture of yourself it's like hard to live with uh, in a funny way. And um, I don't know, I have a mortgage on my house in East Hampton. I'm getting older. It would be nice to get rid of that. So we'll see. Lot number 198, Rob Colicello, and starts at 150,000, 160,000. I mean, yeah, I do kind of have mixed feelings about selling it because, you know, actually, I did, sort of didn't until. Like, I was looking in the catalog, the catalog arrived, and I'm flipping through it, you know, and there's my portrait, and like, I'm, oh God, this looks so nice, you know, why am I giving this up? I look so handsome. <laughs> 160,000, 170,000, 180,000, at $180,000, at $180,000. Most collectors would sort of spurn the idea of anything that was commissioned. The thing is, you know, it, with the idea being, well, it wasn't really Andy's idea, it was a client who came to him. But m many, many of Andy's paintings started as ideas from somebody else, very often an art dealer. The thing is, Andy asked people for ideas all the time, and of 500 ideas, he would pass up 499, and that 500th, he would know this is an Andy Warhol idea, you know, and he would seize upon it. 190,000, so you're bid at 190,000. At 190,000, with that at night, and I'm selling it for 190,000 dollars. It was A.B. Rosen, ordered as a gift for his wife, Samantha, who is really a close friend. He has probably the largest and best collection of Warhol commissioned portraits in the world, uh, and he's got portraits of Nuriyev, Muhammad Ali, Jane Fonda, Nan Kempner, uh, the Shah, Robert Maplethorpe, on and on and on. I'll be, you know, in, in very good company, and I can go visit my portrait also, and I'm sure this is the kind of collection that I'll end up in a museum someday. Well, Martin Sarr, who's a young artist from Estonia, 
he said to me one time, you know so much about all these people and you never write all the stuff that you know about these famous people. And I said, I'll never tell, I'll never tell. You always have mixed feelings, I think, but I have mixed feelings about everything. But I feel like the way it worked out, it worked out beautifully and could not have worked out better. That's it. <laughs>